Welcome to this class on the topic of job evaluation. Job evaluation is a systematic way of determining the value or the worth of a job in an organization. It's trying to measure the value of the job within the organization. So the, the process of job evaluation is important. It tries to decide which jobs are to be evaluated. So not all jobs perhaps need to be evaluated. Some jobs, the role of some jobs is, are very obvious and don't need to be evaluated. Perhaps the tasks that certain jobs involve are very straightforward and don't need to be evaluated. But some jobs need to be measured and need to be evaluated because they are crucial in the success of the of the business. So job analysis and preparing a job description is important. It's important to work out what the job is, what the job involves, and writing out a description of the job, writing out um, an accurate description so that the job can be evaluated. Its contribution to the organization can be properly evaluated. So it's important to systematically rate each job based on the job evaluation factors selected. The points assigned for each of the factors are totaled for each job. So the, the process of job evaluation is looking at the job, deciding what the job is, what, what does the job entail, what, what needs to be completed for the job to be successfully completed. Looking at each of those points or each of those processes that the job involves and trying to assign the importance assign weights to the importance of each of those factors within the job so that an overall view of the job can be measured and can be can be achieved. So it's important that key jobs, key tasks are properly evaluated. The The job is evaluated in the following three categories. First of all in what we call know-how. It's important that the people undertaking the job know how to complete the job and how to deal with issues arising within that particular task or set of tasks. So it's important that the operators or the managers or whoever's involved in, in the particular job know how to deal with issues as they arise. They must also be able to deal with problems as they arise. Deal with the problems, solve the problems and ensure that the, the task continues and try to get it to continue smoothly so that it continues to function smoothly within the organization it's not an issue that occupies the minds of management. There are no hold-ups or no stoppages as a consequence. So the operator or the, the manager who is responsible or whoever is responsible for the particular job knows how to keep the job running smoothly and is able to solve problems. And is also accountable. Uh, when the job breaks down or there are issues with the job, the, the issues that are causing the problems can be identified quickly and can be accounted for. It may be that the operator is not performing his or her task correctly and, and is leading to breakdown. It could be that certain parts of the, the process are badly designed, so there's, there's an issue of accountability. So it's important that these three factors are taken into account when evaluating jobs. That there should be know-how, that the, the people performing the tasks are properly trained, they understand the job, 
they know how to deal with the problems as they arise and they know how to keep that particular task running smoothly. They're able to solve the problems or any problems that arise. Uh, if a problem does arise they know how to deal with it uh, perhaps based on their past experience or from their training. And any issues associated with the job are accountable. So if, if there is a, an issue with the job, uh, if there's an issue with the processes within the job or whatever, they're accountable. The, the, it may be a design issue, it may be that the, um, the task was badly designed in the first place, perhaps the components that are being used are faulty or whatever, so that there is accountability. Now let's look at each of these three parts in somewhat more detail to get a greater understanding of them. We'll start with know-how. This is the, the sum total of every kind of knowledge and skill, however acquired. It could be through, as I said earlier, experience, education, and these are what's needed for acceptable job performance. So it's a question of marrying up the experience of the operator, the education of the operator, to the tasks that are required to successfully complete the job. If it's a, a skilled job working a, a machine in a very skilled manner, then there should be experience and there should be adequate training. But it's important that the person performing the task knows how to deal with the requirements of the job. So know-how includes three elements. First of all there's the, the specialized, technical, or if you like practical know-how. So it's the, the basic job knowledge that's required. So operators working on a particular job should have the, the technical skills the ability to deal with the job. They should know how to deal with the job. So they need to have basic job knowledge. That's essential. There should be managerial know-how. The, the degree to which the job deals with planning and organizing the employer's activities and coordinating with others. So it's, it's important that the the managers and the the people who are linked to the job that they know the importance of the job and they're able to smoothly coordinate the outcomes of that particular job to their the various other tasks that have been performed within the organization perhaps a particular job is a part of a production line so it must be produced before the follow-up parts or it should smoothly fit into the overall production system it should be continuous it should be on the, the time scale that has been agreed and has been set and the management should know how to deal with any issues that are causing a problem because those problems will manifest themselves further down the line and also there's human relations skills. It's important to have persuasion and communication skills for motivating and training and developing others. It's important that management takes a wide view of motivation and training and development and ensures that the various operators have the skills and the motivation and training to perform the tasks adequately. Now problem solving, that was the next point we mentioned earlier. Um, problem solving is the amount of original self-starting thinking required for the job analysis, for the evaluation and for creating and reasoning and arriving at some conclusions. Problem solving it involves all sorts of uh, approaches. The 
operators should be able to solve the problems by analyzing the situation, by looking at what's happened and look at the various processes and understand how each process fits together and what are the technical links between them and um, being able to improvise if something goes wrong until a more permanent fix has been arranged. They should be able to reason the importance of the job, they should understand the importance of the job and try to take steps to ensure that the, the various jobs run smoothly. Problem solving has two elements. There is the, the thinking environment defines the degree to which the incumbent, the, the person doing the job, is free to develop answers to problems ranging from the day-to-day -day decisions based on simple memory to those which require creative thinking or long-term strategies. So the, the workers should be encouraged to think about their jobs, to think about uh, solutions to problems when problems arise. And the solutions may be very basic solutions, but they should be valued nonetheless. It's the contribution of the person doing the job. And if nothing else, that will add to their morale. It'll add to their motivation. But it may also come up with uh, more long-term solutions. The, the people doing the job who are thinking about the job almost on a continuous basis may come up with better ways of performing the tasks and these should not be dismissed these should be considered seriously because there may be long-term benefits from adopting uh, this more long-range and more strategic thinking the thinking challenge well defines the complexity and uniqueness of problems and may range from repetitive to highly creative so operators working on a particular job or performing particular tasks if they perform the tasks over and over they will get to know every aspect of that job the chances are and over time they will build up an expertise in that particular function and they may come up with creative suggestions which should be taken on board. This should be considered if for no other good reason than the, uh, as I said earlier, they promote motivation amongst the workers. Accountability. Well, this is the answerability for actions and for the consequences of that action. Accountability is, is taking responsibility for a particular action. So if, uh, if a particular job does n is not working or is not working efficiently, somebody must be accountable for it. Somebody, there must be a reason for it. And that reason can be traced back to perhaps bad design, um, poor components, uh, poor layout, poor training for the uh, for the operators. There's always some sort of uh, cause to these situations, and accountability is a way of trying to determine that. Now it has three elements: freedom to act. This is the degree to which the position can take action without consulting higher authority. So sometimes operators when they're performing a particular task, the task breaks down, they should be free to try and fix it. They, they know what's wrong. They do the job every day. They have an expertise in that particular area. So when the, when the system breaks, they may be in the best position to fix it. And they should have the freedom to be able to address the issue and try and get the, the job moving again. There may be an impact on end results. 
Now, it may be that um, the the people performing the task need to report that there is a problem here. The problem with the components or problems with the design of the particular job or the layout of the job or whatever. And so the, there may be a wider decision that's needed, perhaps at managerial level, further down the line. And there's also an issue of magnitude. It's the size of the area in which the job functions. So jobs could be the whole organization, it could be a whole department, or it could be just manufacturing a single component. So accountability can run at different levels. It can be the organization should be accountable, or it could be a particular department may be accountable, or a, a particular worker is accountable. So it, it runs at different levels. Um, next is the the process of job evaluation. Now, selecting the method of evaluation. Well, it's very important that when there is a process of job evaluation, of looking at the jobs and looking at the importance of jobs and looking at all the aspects associated with the particular jobs within an organization, it's important that there should be some method of evaluation. It should not be haphazard. There should be some methodology. There should be some process that's clear, unambiguous, fair, that's going to be used to evaluate the jobs. And the jobs should be classified according to their importance, according to the tasks, the dexterity that's required on the part of the workers, um, the training that's required. So jobs should be classified according to their complexity. And then the it's important to, to install the program, having evaluated the job, having measured the job and seen what's involved, it should be installed. And it's not just installing the job, perhaps it's installing a whole package of measures associated with the job as well, such as training, such as support, such as uh, monitoring, detailed monitoring, and looking at issues, perhaps when there are breakdowns in the job or malfunctions or whatever, looking at the whole program to see if the program can be uh, refined and developed further. And it's important to review all of this periodically. Depending on the complexity of the, uh, of the job and depending on the importance of the job, the review period may be very short. It could be every week, it could be every day, it depends. Uh, if it's not that crucial, then perhaps the review period could be lengthened out. Now the features of job evaluation, well, it tries to assess jobs, not people. So it is job evaluation, so it's evaluating the job, not evaluating the people who perform the job. Um, the job is what is required. Uh, the people are the the motivators. These are the ones who enable the job to get done. But evaluating the job means looking at the task. What is required? Now, the standards of job evaluation tend to be relative, not absolute. In other words, the standards of job evaluation are compared to perhaps other jobs within the business. Uh, looking at the complexity of other jobs, looking at um, the issues surrounding the completion of other tasks. So it's, it's a, a relative comparison. How important is that particular job in the overall scheme of things? Is the job more important than other jobs or less important than other jobs? 
So it's relative. It's not absolute. So not all the jobs are equally important, generally speaking, within organizations. Some jobs are more important than others. The basic information on which job evaluations are made is obtained from job analysis. So we understand jobs because job analysis has taken place. We only understand jobs once they've been analysed. Now features of um, job evaluation. Well, job ev evaluations are carried out by groups, generally speaking, not by individuals. Job evaluations tend to uh, involve the manager, perhaps the line managers, it could involve the operators, uh, there may be feedback taken at various levels to try and get an overall picture of how the job is constructed, how the job is performed, what issues are involved in looking at the job. So generally speaking, groups tend to be involved, not individuals. And there's always some degree of subjectivity involved in job analysis and in job evaluation. Um, some people may find particular jobs difficult, others find them easy. Some consider the processes to be correct and some consider them to be wrong. So it's subjective. And of course the, the task of management is to try to get as objective as possible because objective knowledge and objective insights tend to be uh, more valuable. But when there is subjectivity, if a lot of uh, the people involved in a particular job agree, then the chances are they are correct because various people are coming up with the same ideas about the job. So even though it's subjective, there may be an insight to be had because so many people are saying the same things. Job evaluation does not uh, fix pay scales. Um, so job evaluation, because it tends to be relative, it doesn't fix the pay scale. It provides a basis for evaluating a rational wage structure. Uh, so looking at the organization in total, looking at all of the jobs that have to take place within the organization, ranking the different jobs in terms of their importance, their complexity and so on, may give a, a better way of designing the, the pay scales within the organization. Who is doing more? Who is performing more? Who is uh, responsible for uh, more output? So it's, it's looking at all of the various jobs and job evaluation is important because it gives us information about each individual task but then there are many tasks within the organization it's only when when the management look at the various tasks that they can get some insight into what the the pay scales should be now the benefits of job evaluation well it tries to link pay with the requirements of the job so that's one benefit. Uh, if jobs are very onerous and very difficult and uh, requires a lot of training, perhaps they deserve more rewards. So it tries to link pay with the requirements of the job. But it can only link pay to the job if the job has been evaluated. So job evaluation is important. It offers a systematic procedure for determining the relative worth of jobs. So it's, it's a systematic way of going about ranking the jobs within the organization. An equitable pay structure is a natural outcome of job evaluation. So if job evaluations are done correctly, then complex jobs jobs which require more effort on the part of the workers, they will be rewarded more highly. 
jobs which are easy to perform and uh, don't require a lot of effort won't get as much. So it's, it tends to bring about some sort of equity in terms of pay structure. A non-biased non job evaluation tends to eliminate salary inequalities by placing jobs having similar requirements in the same salary range. Well, if a job evaluation shows two tasks, two jobs to be very similar in terms of the requirements on the part of the operators, the requirements on the part of management, uh, the the work effort that is required by the the workers, then those two jobs are roughly equal and will the chances are will carry the same pay structure. The the workers will get the same. They're roughly the same jobs. Also, job evaluation tries to link pay with the requirements of the job. So as jobs are being evaluated, it it emerges from that whole process of analysis of the job what the the pay should be, what is what is fair for that particular job. So it offers the the a way of determining the relative worth of jobs. It's systematic and it works out what jobs are worth because there's a greater understanding of what the job is. So now workers can be paid fairly for what they're doing. And it's an equitable outcome, a natural outcome of job evaluation. And as I said earlier, in one of the earlier slides, it leads to an unbiased in terms of job evaluation. Uh, when people are doing similar jobs, they get similar pay. Now employees as well as unions participate as members of job evaluation committees. So job evaluation committees, people who are trying to work out what the, the jobs are, they should be as wide as possible. It should be the employees, the management, trade unions, if there are trade unions within the organisation, trying to get a fair and accurate picture as to what jobs are so as to work out what the pay salary should be. Um, it should have a very wide uh, remit. It should have many people from within the organisation trying to evaluate the jobs. So when job evaluation is conducted properly it helps the evaluation of new jobs. So when new jobs are developed um, the, the older evaluations of jobs which are much more long run and, and long established within the business, the insights that the management have got from those particular tasks may help in determining the evaluation of new jobs. There may be similar processes, there may be similar issues, so that management are able to set up the new jobs and have a, a greater insight because of past evaluations of other jobs. It points out uh, possibilities of more appropriate use of the plant's labour force by indicating jobs that need more or less skilled workers than those who are manning those jobs currently. It's important when job evaluation takes place that management should understand what skills the workers require to properly evaluate those jobs. It's important that management understands the training that's required and provide the training. It'll not only improve efficiency but it'll improve safety, it'll improve motivation, it'll improve uh, greater productivity. 
So it's important that management look at the labour force and see what skills are required and try to match the skills to the jobs. Now job evaluation methods, well there's a ranking method uh, where jobs are rated one against the other. One job is seen as very complex, the next one is not so complex and the next one is less complex again and so on. So it could be the jobs could be ranked within the organization. It could be classified, it could be classified as highly skilled, not so skilled and so on. So it could be a classification method. Or it could be what's known as a three-point method. Let's look at each of these and um, get an insight into what these are. This is job evaluation methods. Uh, in, in fact, I should point out that should, there is also a four factor comparison method. But as I said, let's let's look at each of these and try and get an insight into what they are. First of all, the, the ranking method. Well, this is the simplest method of job evaluation. Um, quite a straightforward method. In this method, the jobs are arranged from the highest to the lowest in order of their value or merit to the organization. So it, jobs are ranked. This job is very important this job is not so important and this job is even less important and so there's a ranking of jobs in terms of their importance. It could be in terms of their relative difficulty. Uh, given that all the jobs must be completed they could be ranked in terms of difficulty in completing the task which could be in terms of operator skills, um, the the manual work involved in the task, it could be the the amount of effort required in the particular task. So it could be that they're ranked on the basis of difficulty. Jobs are usually ranked in each department and then the department rankings are combined to develop an organizational ranking. So it may be possible uh, if jobs are ranked ranked as, let's say, a ranking of 1 means very complex, very difficult task. Now if a department has a lot of jobs ranked at 1, that department is seen as performing crucial role within the organization. The jobs are difficult, the jobs are uh, demanding, so it may be an issue that uh, that other departments perhaps have got an easier time. Other departments have easier tasks to perform. So it's a way perhaps of ranking departments as well. But the ranking method, that's one way of doing it. Job classification, well according to this method um, a predetermined number of job groups or job classes are established and jobs are assigned to those classifications. So in this way um, a department, let's say a production department, may be assigned a number of predetermined jobs. Uh, the production department must make the following and the department may have different strands within it. It may have a department for making packaging. It may have a, a section making um, components. It may have a section processing raw materials. So it may have three sections, let's say, or it may have ten sections. And these are the classifications it's working to. So it places groups of jobs into job classes or job grades. So some workers will be seen as working in production, working in production, working with raw materials. Some will be seen as working with components. Uh, some workers will be seen as working with packaging. So the, the workers are classified according to their tasks. And there may be separate classes, may include office, clerical, managerial, personnel. These are different job classifications. 
So now it's it may be possible to classify jobs according to job classifications. Example of job classifications in say engineering businesses. Well, class one could be senior management, class two middle management, class three could be line management, class four could be foreman, class five skilled workers, uh, class six semi-skilled workers and class seven unskilled workers. So now we have a classification of the types of worker involved in the organization. In this case we have seven classes. Next uh, <coughs> we have the, the point method for job evaluation. Um, this method is widely used currently. It's, it's, it's quite a widely used method. Jobs are expressed in terms of key factors. What's, what's the essential part of the job? What's, what's the crucial part of the job? And the jobs are expressed in terms of these key, key or critical factors. Points are assigned for each factor after prioritizing each factor in order of importance. So the jobs are ranked according to importance and then points are assigned to each of the factors. The points are summed up to determine the wage rate for the job. Jobs with similar points are placed in similar pay, uh, pay grades. So now it's a, it's a question of describing the job, jobs which are similar, have, have similar processes and similar tasks, essentially get the same pay. Factor comparison methods, well it is more systematic and scientific method of job evaluation. This, this is a much more systematic approach. Uh, though it's the most complex method of all, it, it is consistent and uh, most easily set out, I suppose, most easily uh, calculated and uh, dealt with. Under the method, instead of ranking complete jobs, each job is ranked according to a series of factors. Now, so jobs are broken down to a series of factors and they're ranked according to these. So for example, somebody working on, on a production line, they may have manual work involved, but there may also be skill involved. Uh, there may be uh, long-term application of uh, work over the span of a day. So it needs some sort of stamina to maintain the the production line. Um, so there may be different facets to a particular task. Now these could include mental effort. The workers have to apply themselves to make sure that they don't get too overly familiar with the tasks and start to make mistakes because they're not taken seriously, they're, they're not concentrating. So there's a mental effort involved. There's also a physical effort. They may have to move the components from one part to the next. They may have to lift and carry components. Uh, they may have to attach different components together in, in production, let's say. They have to uh, screw one part, one component, onto another component and attach that component onto the next one and there's a physical effort. And there are skills needed to ensure that the worker can can do this, can concentrate for long periods and has got the dexterity to uh, perform the physical tasks that are required. 
but also the, the workers must take responsibility for what they're doing so that they can perform the tasks, perform them well and take responsibility, can show that they are responsible for that particular function. But there's also issues about working conditions. The working conditions um, need to be appropriate, they need to be conducive to good work. The environment in which the worker is operating should be safe, should be clean and um, and the worker should have respect. The, the management should respect the worker and uh, and support the worker in trying to achieve the tasks. And as I said earlier, there should be know-how. The worker should know how to do the job. They should be adequately trained. They should be intelligent. Within the context of the requirements of the job, they should be able to work out what's required and they should be able to perform the tasks. And they should have, again, as I said earlier, problem-solving abilities. When something goes wrong, the workers should be able to solve the problem. If it's not a, a big problem, they should be able to make the adjustments, perhaps uh, reorder the way in which the components are coming through, or uh, fix the, the problem locally, as opposed to sending it off to management and perhaps stopping production whilst a bigger solution is found. It may be that the problem can be fixed locally and also reported so that management can think about it whilst the, the job is still continuing. And of course, as I said, there has to be accountability. The worker should be responsible for his or her contribution to the job. But others involved in the design of the, the job should also be accountable and management should be accountable in setting realistic goals and realistic tasks. So accountability should be clear and should be clearly stated and understood by all involved. Wages are assigned to jobs in comparison to its ranking on each job factor. So in this particular approach to a job evaluation, uh, each of these, there are eight of them here, each of these will be uh, taken as important and uh, the overall contribution of each will receive some sort of reward which will go to build up the final uh, remuneration for the, for the worker. So job analysis and job description. Well, factors from job description. Well, skills, effort and responsibility. So the workers should have skills, they should be prepared to put in an effort and they should be responsible for the particular task. The same skills, efforts and responsibilities should be reflected in management as well just in case something goes wrong or the workers leave or the workers are away ill production can continue so uh, there, there is a, a backup plan in the event of, of a breakdown of any one of these. Um, the job evaluation and job structure is used to get a picture of what's happening at each level within the organization. Each job is evaluated. It's evaluated in terms of its importance and proper remuneration and proper training, proper support can be offered at each level because there is greater understanding of the requirements of each job. And the pay that results is determined from the job analysis. So, this is quite a long class. Um, I would ask you to go back over it a few times and perhaps wind it forwards, wind it backwards and uh, study individual components of the, the class. But job evaluation is very important. It's important that the workers know what their contribution is and know how their contribution is being valued by the organisation. 
that's all I'm going to deal with at the moment, so we're going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.